Hey guys, what's up? It's Ari from AppFind here. Today I'm going to be doing a Let's Play on Battle Heart Legacy. The latest game from Micah Mobile, Battle Heart Legacy is the follow-up to the original Battle Heart game that came out three years ago. They've done an amazing job making it 3D, adding a lot of amazing quests, different character attributes to unlock, such as Mage, Knight, which I'm going to be playing in this Let's Play, and a bunch more. So as you can see right now, I did skip the tutorial. We're just talking to some random people. Uh, we've got some advanced tips. But anyways, guys, if you're more interested in learning a little bit more about the game and not watching a Let's Play, be sure to check out my review on the app, uh, which is going to be coming out a little bit later today. It's probably already out by the time you're watching this. So you can just click the annotation and check out that video. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump right into the Let's Play. As I've told you before, I am going to be playing the Knight class. And there are 10 classes total, including Mage, Rogue, Paladin, etc. Uh, so there's a lot of different classes that you can unlock. So you should definitely check out the app, buy the app. It's definitely worth $5. And it's one of my favorite games I've played so far this year. Alright, let's jump right in. So as you can see, I'm just talking to some villagers. Uh, and another really cool part about Battle Heart Legacy is your actions kind of define you, your character. So you can choose to be mean to people, you can choose to attack people frivolously, or you can be nice and be the nice guy uh, who everybody wants to invite on quests. So you could accidentally give up a quest by being mean to somebody, while at the same time, uh, you might not get the loot had you killed them. So there's a lot of trade-offs on how you play the game, but that's what I love about Battle Heart Legacy. Uh, all the different open world aspects of it, and especially the fact that you can mix and match different classes. You don't have to just choose one, you can mix and match. Now, your first playthrough, you might want to just choose one class, like I'm going to be mainly having the knight class. I might add in a couple spells to go along with it or something like that, but mainly the knight class in this Let's Play. But when you play it through a second or a third time, you can mix and match different classes. Uh, now, there's five classes you can get in the academy, which is we're going to be going into in just a second. But there's also five additional classes that you have to find and explore. Um, and those include Barbarian, Necromancer, etc., uh, Ninja, Witch. There's a lot of really cool um, different additional classes that you can go out and find. So as you can see, if you wanted to read the text here, I'm just asking a little bit about the area, trying to figure out where I need to go. Uh, this is the academy where you're going to train. Now, I actually did this wrong at the beginning. I'm not really supposed to add my points yet. I'm supposed to actually talk to the people first and uh, learn where to put my points. But fortunately enough for myself, I did choose strength and endurance, which are two of the big ones for the knight character. So as you can see right here with the uh, talking to the people, in the academy trying to figure out what to do uh, and that's a lot of this game there is a lot of talking but you're actually in control of what you say and what you say has an effect on who you're gonna battle uh, what quests you're gonna get uh, who you make friends with who you make enemies with so there's a lot of open world aspects to the game it doesn't feel like you're just reading dialogue reading text from a book you really have control as to what you're going to do and that adds to the replay factor you can choose to be a mean character killing everybody or you can choose to be a really nice guy you might get a bunch of quests but you might not uh, get all that cool loot had you killed that character so let's just go over some of these characters here as you can see um, we had the first one, which is more of a ranger. You're going to be able to shoot down people. This is a paladin. So the paladin has a lot of healing spells. Um, they're going to have a lot of charisma, strength, endurance are the main uh, stat points that you need to apply for them. Now, I'm going to ultimately choose knight because it's kind of the standard traditional character. I felt I wanted to do it in this review, uh, or let's play that is. As you can see... Um, the knight character is kind of the more traditional, you got your sword, you got your shield um, kind of character. There's sport, spurts of damage. Uh, it's kind of the all-around type character. Now the mage is the one I'm actually using in my personal account, which I will show you in my review. Uh, if you want to check out the review, I'll show you my personal account with my mage. Um, but that's also another great character. And then there's also the thief. Now the thief is actually a pretty cool character because uh, he teaches you how to stab people in the back, uh, actually pickpocket people. So there's a lot of really cool uh, replayability. You can choose to be different characters. You can mix and match if you want to be a mage thief, <laughs> if you want to be a knight, uh, and also have like 
ranger equipment such as a bow and arrow you can do all that and that's what makes this game so great it's got that open world aspect which you don't see a lot in iOS games. So as you can see here, I'm training. Now training requires two things. You have to have your stats for training and then you also have to have the gold necessary to be able to train. So as you can see there, I had the necessary gold, but I didn't have all the stats. And you get stat boosts whenever you um, gain experience, whenever you go up a level. Uh, and then you're gonna gain three stat um, boosts that you can use towards all the different stats that you have. So as you can see, you can interact with almost every character around. Well, you can interact with every character, but sometimes they don't have much to say, but sometimes you can learn a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, or even if you're lucky, get quests. And that's the cool thing. You're not automatically going to get a quest. You have to talk to them. You have to say the right thing. Uh, what you say might lead to a battle, might lead to a quest, uh, or nothing. Who knows? Uh, but there's a lot of really cool open world aspects that adds to the fact that you can play this game over and over. And that's another cool thing. You can actually have as many different accounts on the same game as you want, which is really cool. So I ran into this guy and now he's going to be giving me some honest work uh, for some pay and going to be giving me 100 gold coins, which is really cool. Uh, so I got to go attack some goblins. But first I'm going to explore a little bit more uh, around the uh, hometown area so I can learn a little bit more about the area. But uh, in just a second, a little later, I'm going to be going on that quest and we're going to be battling. Uh, which I know is what some of you guys are looking forward to because you want to see all the attack modes and how that all works uh, right here in Battle Heart Legacy. Uh, which they've de definitely done a great job porting to 3D. Now, I, you can't actually go over here, which is a little bit strange. That's one of my only downsides. Sometimes it looks like you can go off into separate parts of the map, um, but you really can't go past there. It kind of ends. Uh, but other than that, it does do a great job with all the different areas. There's hardly any load times walking in from one area to another as well. So here we have somebody who might be just drunk, might be uh, talking to you straight about um, a witch that's living on in the woods. Now, I chose to be really nice to her because I wanted to see if there actually was a witch that maybe I could kill uh, or meet or make friends with because I wanted to learn where that witch was. Had I chosen just to laugh at her and say, you know, she's obviously a drunk, um, then I might not be able to find that witch. And those are just some of the uh, different choices that you can make in this game. And I think that that's just absolutely amazing. Um, now I'm also interested, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite uh, class of character is. Obviously, um, my favorite's actually going to be the mage. Uh, I have been playing it a little bit on my personal account before I started this uh, knight character, and I love the mage um, so far. But I've only played the knight and the mage, so let me know what your favorite character or the character you're using right now is in the comment section below. I look forward to, uh, to hearing that, because uh, obviously they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Just let me know which one you're using in the comments. All right, so as you can see here, you have your traditional shop. Uh, like most RPG style games, each shop has its own type of weapons that you can get. So this is kind of the preliminary basic weapons. I've got the steel sword, uh, which obviously is important for the knight. And then um, also I'm gonna be able to get armor later on. And um, you can also sell uh, weapons or equipment later on as well. And as you can see, I wanna grab a shield. Uh, that way I can have a shield to protect myself when I am battling. So we're just going to exit out here. Um, oh, nope. First, we're going to talk to him a little bit. So what we want to do is learn a little bit more about the weapons. And basically, uh, the cool thing about the battling feature on here is that you're actually going to be able to auto attack when you walk near people. Now, some people say, oh, that might be a little bit too easy. Well, not necessarily because of the fact that you have to manage all these different spells, health potions. You also have to move because it's a key aspect, especially when you have low health at the beginning, you want to get out of the way to make sure that you're not going to get killed. Overall, it's really cool. Now we're going to take a quick break uh, to thank our sponsors, actually feature points this time. We'll be right back after the break. Today, we're going to be showing you how to get feature points and get paid apps absolutely free. You can get any of these cool paid apps and also iTunes and Amazon gift cards. Go to bit.ly slash get feature points. It has to be exactly that URL, bit.ly slash get feature points, all lowercase. You're gonna install the profile. It's verified, so it's safe. Then you're gonna add it to your home screen. You can open this app up, take a look. You get free points just for using our referral code, which is available on the screen. Now you're gonna hit download and get any of these free apps. And once you open these apps, it's gonna mark that and you're gonna get points for opening the apps. Once you collect enough points, you're able to actually get 
iTunes gift cards, apps, tons of cool stuff. The app you just saw us download was worth over 200 points. Um, so we just downloaded a few apps and now we can already get Toy Story Smash It, which is a 99 cent app, absolutely free. Once we uh, collect it, you can see that it is downloading now. Be sure to check it out, bit.ly slash get feature points. Check out my full feature points tutorial in the description below or use the annotation link and have fun with your paid apps for free. All right, we're back. We're gonna go into the Goblin Hovel, which is basically where all the goblins are located. We need to get this uh, quest completed in order to get our 100 gold, uh, which obviously we can use to get better weapons, um, more skills. We can obviously get experience and be able to unlock those additional skills. So as you can see here, I just killed that first goblin um, fairly easily. And uh, I'm using that advanced trick that lets you move faster and all that stuff. So as you can see here, I have a couple of enemies attacking. And obviously you gotta target which enemy you want to attack. Uh, and that's the enemy you're gonna attack first, especially with all of your special abilities. Um, and also your standard auto attack as well. Now, as you can see, I'm just standard auto attacking uh, these enemies until I give an additional command uh, to either do my strong blow, as you can see here, uh, or to do my swipe attack, as you can see there as well. So as you can see, it's pretty good a uh, way of balancing the auto attacking, not making it too overpowered, but also making it easier for you to maneuver all the different things you need to do, uh, such as moving, uh, adding all of your spells or abilities, and then also taking health potions if necessary. So as you can see, some of these attacks let me attack multiple people at the same time, but when I'm going into my standard attack, it's just one person. And all of these attack mechanics totally change if you're going to be using a ranger, obviously you've got archer equipment, uh, if you're using a mage, you've got spells that you attack with, and that's really the cool thing about this game is the fact that there's the ability to have all of these different spells, different uh, attack attacks, abilities, weapons that all do different things and make the gameplay totally different uh, between each character that you're able to play with. So as you can see, I've just disposed of a couple of different goblins. Want to take a quick health potion just to make sure uh, that I don't die over here. Um, because basically once you die, you just go exit out of the map um, and then you have to go back in, but you do not, uh, it does not save where you left off, so you have to go back in and defeat any of the enemies that you already uh, killed. However, your entire progress in the game is still there, so you don't have to worry about um, it ending or anything like that. You still, all set progressive RPG, however it does end that particular campaign as you would expect. So as you can see, every time I kill somebody, I'm either gaining experience, I'm gaining gold, uh, sometimes I also get some random pickups that they have as well uh, that are kind of like power-ups that you can apply to your character which will add either speed, um, critical chance, that kind of thing. So as you can see when I'm attacking multiple people at the same time it gets a little bit more tricky. I have to utilize um, you know, walking away to wait for my cooldowns to occur uh, and that way I can just swipe everybody at the same time, uh, get as much of that done as possible. So it did lag a little bit here and I apologize for that, um, but I did want to just, you know, leave it in here because I was just about to, uh, to end. Alright, so as you can see now I gotta attack the person who is the archer and let's just complete that here and then I should be able to get my loot. So as you can see, we just walk back over to the chest, open up that chest, and I get a Swordsman Gauntlet and uh, 27 gold, and then also the 100 gold that I'm going to get uh, from that guy who wanted me to go on this quest in the first place. Now as you run around the map, you could also encounter random encounters that are going to be uh, different people that might attack you, um, they might also give you different opportunities, opportunities for quests, so there's definitely a lot of really cool content that just pops up uh, when you're walking around in the map as well. So as you can see, we just completed this quest. I want to collect my 100 gold. Um, and yeah, so that's basically it for this Let's Play. Uh, I want to get another one in here. Uh, hopefully make this a series with the knight character. But let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite character is. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends. And uh, once again, I'm Mark from Mapfine, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!